Today's video will be using the same vintage mold we used in the last video. And we're gonna use the tall one. And we're gonna use called opaque, white opaque or opal frit to give it a white non-see-through look to it. So, and then we're gonna attempt to do a technique of using stencils and frit powder with a pattern on top of it using a stencil of a turtle. So here's the stencil and once it's fired, it'll leave us a blank surface and then we're gonna come and try to lay this over it and sprinkle some powder into the stencil and then refire it and see what we get. Um, so we'll start off with weighing out around 60, 65 grams of white opal frit, which is what I've already done. I've already got it pre-weighed here. I think I ended up with around 64 grams. Sixty-six, but you got to count for the cups, so it's about sixty-four to sixty-five grams. So basically, very simple. This is a real easy project here. You just sprinkle the frit evenly in the mold. Try to get it, we can smooth it out later. And sometimes I don't use all the frit, it just basically just what it looks like for me, but I think today we'll go ahead and use it all. Just try to get an even, even distribution in your mold. And then I'll just get a small brush here and just kind of brush it flat, just kind of pat it down. You can brush these little pieces off that you are on the side. Don't brush too hard because you got your mold release on there, but it's really not gonna affect anything that much if you brush some of that off. So I just kind of just pat it down, try to get it even, kind of a good flat surface. It's gonna smooth out anyway, level, when you fire it, but I usually like starting with a good even base and then find your little point here where the, the hole will be made for the string to go through on the ornament. So just make sure that's showing through right there. Just make sure you can see that. And then we'll put it in the kiln and fire it. Then I'll put the firing schedule in the uh, description section so you can see what it is from the Color Devere website. Um, and we'll fire it and we'll come back and, and show you how it turned out. Okay, we'll open the kiln and see how it turned out. I think it looks okay. We'll take it out and take it to the bench and see how it did. Okay, we're back from the kiln. We've got our mold with our one ornament in it. We just did one because we're trying to as an experiment to see if um, this process is, is going to work um, with the stencil and the powder. So first thing we'll do is we'll take the finished ornament out of the mold. I just use a little picker tool just to lift it up just to make it easier. And there it is. It's got a pretty smooth finish to it. Is what you want. Um, I'll wipe it down just to get some of the um, lubricant release that's on it off because um, we're going to put it back in there so it, it's okay but just for handling it I don't want to get all my fingers so I usually just wipe it down for a little bit. We're going to set the mold out of the way for now. <clears throat> um, before we do that we're going to go ahead and weigh it just to see what we came out with on our weight came out with 64.7 grams. We're shooting for around 60 with this mold, so um, it's pretty good. It's okay to go over. 
some. So what I'm going to attempt to do today, and have not done this before, is we'll try it together. It's an experiment with using stencils and frit powder and creating a design on the ornament and then refiring it. So this will be fired twice when we're done. Um, these stencils I get locally. It's a local stained glass shop. Joza is the brand name they gave to it. I can put the link down in the description if anyone's interested in taking a look at these. Um, they're rigid. Um, I haven't been able to find very many that it's like a plastic that's laser etched so, and it's pretty thick so you can get quite a bit more powder down in there and build it up a little bit if you want a little more texture design. So this one's going to be a sea turtle and we think we have enough space on the face here to to do this. I know with the round one there was plenty of space but um, maybe we'll do that one next time. I just thought I'd I kind of like this design a little bit better, so I thought I'd see if I can get this to fit on there. So, don't know how it's going to do since the ornament isn't exactly flat. It's got a little bit of texture to it as far as ripples. So, we'll see. We'll lay this on there in a spot where we think is kind of centralized and start working on it and see what we get. Like I say, it's an experiment. I have not done this before, so um, we'll learn together. Um, these are my fritz. I put these in smaller jars just to make them easier to handle, but um, I've got some red, some turquoise, some greens, spring green, Kelly green, royal blue. That'll be a good mix of colors just to um, put on the turtle, just to give it a little pop of color. So we're gonna go ahead and take the tops off of these have them ready and we have a little small sifter a little 80 mesh sifter that we're going to apply the powders with onto the stencil and this is this is it they come in different sizes and i just chose this size just because i usually work with smaller smaller stuff so you just dip a little bit of the powder in there I usually just use whatever I have lying around. A pencil will work, really. Uh, this is the pencil. Um, a brush, a little nylon brush, and you use it just to go over the, and it kind of distributes the powder in kind of an even form. So we're just gonna go along here, just put some on the tips. Not really making a rainbow pattern, but more like a stripey type pattern. Um, like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, you know, give it some color. So when I'm done with that, I usually just tap it out. Nothing major. Put the top on. Get the next color you want to work with. I'm going to go with the Kelly Green. Fill in some green here. Some more fins. Go ahead and do some spring green on top of that. Kind of give it a shading effect between the um, dark green and the lighter green. So you really can't go wrong with this. And let's go with some royal blue. I always like blue, especially with the sea. I'll put it on the lower edge. Maybe some on the tips of the fins. Maybe a little up here. Pretty good. Like I say, this is fairly easy to do. You just put whatever colors you want. I'm not going to do the turquoise today. I just pulled it out in case I wanted to use it. Just whatever strikes my fancy is usually what I usually go with. I'm going to add a little bit more of the darker green just to fill in some, some bare spots. 
in here. So I think that looks pretty good. Now the trick with these stencils is lifting them off without disturbing the pattern underneath. Um, so I usually just try to grab it with four fingers or two fingers, kind of slowly and evenly, and then just lift it straight up. Okay, I've retrieved the mold from earlier, and we're going to try to place this ornament back in the mold so we can refire it. I guess you could lay it flat on a piece of kiln paper, but I didn't want to waste a piece of kiln paper. And we're going to try to get it back in this mold. I'm not sure if it'll if it'll go in there without disturbing the pattern or not, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. I think we can get it in there just fine. Um, but before we do, I thought about it and I think I'm going to go ahead and still use this turquoise that we pulled out earlier and, and didn't use and maybe put a little, spread a little bit around the top and the bottom in this area and this area to kind of maybe give it a water-like effect. So I thought that would be kind of neat to kind of just try to go ahead and, and do that. So we're going to quickly just rub our little sifter, place some turquoise. It's kind of rounded here on the edges so it, the frit may slide off, um, but if it does that's okay. We'll just get what we can, whatever sticks, sticks, not that big a deal. We'll just put it everywhere that we think we'll, it'll hold on to there. Just a couple of spots, nothing major, just a little bit of color to kind of round out the, the whole effect. So I think that'll be okay there. I think it looks good. So we'll set that to the side. Bring our mold back in. See if we can place this in here without disturbing it too much. I'm going to put the tip end in first and then just lay it down. My fingers are too big to go in down in there, so I'm just going to kind of just slide it down in there real easy. And I'm going to use this picker tool I had earlier to kind of support it. Try not to scrape the sides of the mold with your tool. Just kind of slowly lay it in there, and there it goes. That worked just fine. So I think we're ready to give it a tack firing. Just kind of melt it a little bit. Hopefully it'll be raised up, patterning a little bit. So time to get the camera here. That's our final product. Okay, we've fired the ornament with the powder on it and we'll take it out of the kiln and here's the final result. Looks pretty good, I believe. Um, I'll give you some more details in a minute. Let me go ahead and take it out. This time I'm just gonna flip it over into my hand. It just pops right out, nothing major. Just real simple and easy. Um, so there's the back. Like I say, it always gives a nice, this mold gives a really good smooth finish, which I'm always happy with. In the front, you can see there's a little raised texture there to the temperature I fired it, which is what I was going for. I had to watch it a little bit because I wasn't sure what temperature with my kiln, I believe, since it's an analog parameter. First time I've done this in this manner, so I thought I'd just watch it and see at what temperature did it fuse. So I opened the lid a couple of times just to see if it fused, what temperature it fused to the kind of the look I was going for. So. Um, I think it turned out nicely and this is really what I was going for. The temperature on my kiln where I've stopped it was at 1350 degrees. I believe a basic tack fusing temperature is around 1400. So I'm close given that I'm using an analog parameter in a, a very old kiln. It's probably 20 years or older, but it seems to be functioning well. So um, I believe it's just a matter of um, fine-tuning or calibrating my parameter to be more accurate temperature but use the temperature that works for you you could also f fire this a little bit longer to where it'd be completely flat and melted into the face without deforming the shape 
So you just kind of experiment with temperatures and what your kiln will, will produce. So this pretty much came out the way I envisioned. Like I said, I used these stencils from a local um, fusing store, Joza stencils. Um, I believe there's a website link for these. I picked these up in the store itself. So um, if I can find that, I'll post it in the description. And there's instructions on the back on how to use it. Instructions say to fill the stencil, like you see, it's, it's got some thickness to it. Um, haven't measured it, but um, I'll give you a quick measurement on it. Um, it's about two millimeters thick, I'd say. Almost as thickness of a thin glass, the thin set glass that you would use. So the instructions say to fill it to about halfway up the stencil. I mm -hmm. probably went a little bit less than that. So I probably could have got a more darker, richer colors if I had to put a little bit more powder in there. But I was layering different colors and I got the result I was looking for. So I think it turned out fine, but you can definitely use more than I used um, and get that more richer effect if you want uh, more brighter color. So uh, I think it turned out well. And the blue that I put around the sides, I think turned out good too. Gives a little water effect, if you will, to it. So I think it I think I got the result that I was looking for and um, I think it turned out well. So that's going to be the end of the video for today and I thank you for watching and I'll be on the lookout for more. Thank you.